Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is great. Great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah. We may not be able to gather physically. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's unity amongst the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And we're grateful for the unity this morning. Frustration 
any aggravation, any worryation, any doubt or fear. I want you to release it now and speak over yourself and say, there's nothing my God can do. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I believe his word. His word says, with the stripes I am healed. With the stripes I'm healed in my emotions. Healed in my body. Healed in my mind. I am healed. That's nothing my God can do. Nothing my God can do. There's nothing God can do. There's nothing God can do. There is nothing God can do. Can do. There is nothing God can do. Can do. There is nothing God can do. Can do. Can y'all say that? There is nothing God can do. There is nothing God can do. Whatever you want, whatever you desire, can do. He's on the world. There is nothing God can do. I believe your word, Lord. Can do. I believe your word. There is nothing God can do. There is nothing God can do. Can do. I don't have a sickness. There is nothing God can do.
I believe you got for healing my party. I believe. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we've got room for him. Hallelujah. Only believe. There's nothing he can't do. Nothing he can't do. Nothing, 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 nothing he can't do. Hallelujah. Can you say just a little bit more of that? There's nothing he can't do. Can't do. There is nothing God can't do. Come on, can you believe that? Can't do. There is nothing God can't do. Come on, wherever you are, I dare you to make that declaration in your home. Huh. Wherever you're viewing this, say it aloud. There is nothing God can do. Come on, let him know you realize how big he is. He's a great big God. He's sovereign. Uh, he's in charge of everything. Hallelujah. Nothing God can do. There is nothing God can do. Can do. Can do. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Thank you for being God. You are God, and beside you there is no other. You're the author and the finish of our faith. You are God, our Alpha and Omega. Not only will you be there at the end and were you there at the beginning, you are the beginning and you are the end. You are the amen. You are God. You are God. You're God. Worthy. The Lamb that was slain. Even before the foundation of the world, we call you master. We call you savior. We call you redeemer. We call you keeper. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, there's nothing that you cannot do. Uh, oh God, there's nothing beyond your reach. Here we are. You know our several needs. You know our individual needs. You know, oh God, better how to satisfy, oh God, than we even know how to ask. Father, I pray that everyone that's calling your name today, that you show up for them. Reveal yourself, oh God. Reveal yourself, show yourself mighty and strong. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God, oh God, mighty in battle. Thank you for fighting for us. Oh, you're the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Oh, that's who we worship. That's who we adore. We call your name today. Our strong tower. The righteous run in and we are saved. There's nothing that you can't do. Father, we trust you for everything. We trust you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for meeting the needs, oh God. Everyone under the sound of my voice, whether it's right now in this moment or in the days to come, I pray, oh God, that you show up. Show up, oh God. Show up, oh God. <laughs> Our healer heart fixer, mind regulator. We trust you today. Thank you, God, for being God. May our faith be ever increased. May it be fortified. Oh, God, may we only believe. Believe that all things are possible because our trust and our confidence is in you. Father, I pray that as we open up this word today, these scriptures, oh God, that it be life-giving. 
life altering. In the name of Jesus, God, somebody's life is depending on this. They're weighing in the balance and need to make a decision. I pray today that their decision be for Christ. In the name of Jesus, save some soul. Reclaim some backslider. Restore some prodigal son, some daughter who's gone astray. Oh God, let your word deliver us and make us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Those that are with us here in the sanctuary, just before you take your seat, I'm going to go to the word of God and I want you to help me this morning. This will be the first installment of this sermon series for the month of July. Miracles, signs, and wonders. I want to talk to an expectant people today. Somebody who's looking for a miracle. Looking for God to show up. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I need somebody that needs the Lord this morning to help me. Glory to God. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. God can do anything. Hallelujah. Our scripture text this morning is coming from the Gospel of St. Mark, and we're going to be looking at just one verse of scripture, and that'll be coming from the New King James Version of the Bible. We'll find these words recorded. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm going to read that one more time. Elder Goldson, you didn't know it. I didn't talk to you before you got here. Praise team, y'all didn't know it. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is real. By two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. When he could swear by no other, he swore by himself. We're going to read that again one more time for good measure. I want this to resonate in your spirit. We're going to make this declaration and wherever you are, say it aloud. Come on, one, two, three. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Oh, that's a good place to give him a praise right there. Put a praise on it. <laughs> oh, I want to talk to your faith this morning. I want to talk to a believer this morning. Hallelujah. I came to tell you today that God says today for his people, endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. Come on, say that with me. Endless possibility <laughs> Ooh, I want you to grab hold by faith endless possibility there is nothing my God cannot do <laughs> there is nothing no thing my God cannot do hallelujah endless possibility I want that to soak in for a moment. <laughs> Endless possibility. Come on, change your atmosphere wherever you are. Say, Endless possibility. <laughs> By faith, we believe. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God for miracles. I believe God for signs. I believe God for wonders. I believe God. I am possibility. I am potential. 
I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am who God says I am. By the grace of God, I am. <laughs> who God says that I am. And I shall have all that he says. I shall have. Don't go ahead and sit down. Amen. Have your seat. Sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Somebody say, give God something to work with. <laughs> oh, I'm giving him something to work with this morning. Endless possibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yo, give me a moment. Let me walk through this text together. We're going to walk through this together. Hallelujah. By faith, I believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> First lady, you act like you've been waiting on something from the Lord. I, <laughs> I just came to encourage somebody today. Your hope is not in vain. Your belief in God is not in vain. There is nothing my God cannot do. Nothing my God can. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. But it's only to the believer. Can you believe? Can you believe? Can you believe? Can you believe? <laughs> Can you believe? I'm talking to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to whoever will listen. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. <laughs> Endless possibility. Endless possibility. Endless possibility. Ain't no sight, ain't no end in sight. <laughs> no end in sight. Glory to endless possibility. Hallelujah. Endless miracles. You don't have to be satisfied with just one miracle. Miracles, miracles, miracles. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's more than just a cliche, more than just something to say. But I dare you to keep saying that until it resonates in your spirit, till it connects. I believe God. Endless possibility. Hallelujah. Our God can do anything. Hallelujah. Oh, there's an excitement in the air today. Hallelujah. There's an excitement in the air. For somebody, that's confirmation. Your waiting is not in vain. Your believing is not in vain. It's not in vain. Your living is not in vain. Hallelujah. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Season, don't do it without me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Don't do it without me. Come on, one more time. Lord, whatever. Whatever you do.
Thank you, sir. God bless you. I've been singing it since I woke up this morning. Hallelujah. Whatever you're doing in this season, I want to be a part of it. Lord, if you're blessing, and I know you are, please don't do it without me. I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard uh, William, uh, excuse me, Joseph Campbell say these words. We must be willing to let go of the life we have planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. If you want what God has for you in his hand, you have to let go. Oh, oh shut <laughs> you've got to be willing to let go of whatever you've been holding on in your hand somebody say I'm making room for him I'm making room for endless possibilities <laughs> oh I'm on a mission this morning I came to encourage somebody endless possibilities I don't care what they said <laughs> I'm making room, I'm making room, I'm making room. <laughs> I'm making room. Woo. I'm sorry, this is a sanctified church. <laughs> Glory to God. I really did get myself together and I studied a lesson, but hallelujah, the Holy Ghost. Woo. If you want something you never had, You've got to do something that you've never done. I dare you to stretch out in God. Stretch out on him. There is no thing my God can not do. Jesus said, if you can believe. <laughs> Miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to be willing to let go and let God. We have to be willing to let go and let God. Believer, you've got a part to play in this. You have to do your part, hallelujah, and make room for him to do his. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hope bless your name. Give me just a few moments and I promise you we're going somewhere. Hallelujah. Somebody's waiting to hear a word from the Lord. People who've already got it. Hallelujah. Already got him. You already know what to expect because you have history with God. You, you've seen his track record, but there's somebody who's waiting to hear from him and to get to know him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can I tell you about somebody? I'm going to talk about a few people who uh, discovered what endless possibilities mean. In, in 1949, Billy Graham accepted an invitation, and many of us know the name, the evangelist Billy Graham. He, he accepted an invitation from a youth group in Los Angeles, California, by the name of Christ for Greater Los Angeles. They scheduled him for a three-week revival, a three-week tent revival. And due to overwhelming response to this revival, five weeks were added on. This three-week revival went from three weeks now to eight weeks. A tent, a circus tent that seated 6,000 had to be expanded to 9,000 to accommodate 9,000. Uh, what happens is this three-week revival, uh, the name changed to Crusade. Endless possibilities. When we make ourselves available, when we avail ourselves to what God is calling us to, we have opened ourselves up for God to do whatever he wants to do. I promise you that whatever you can imagine, God is seeing much more. I don't care how, however big you can see uh, things happening for you or ever how good God has better. God has more. Hallelujah. 
Graham accepted the invitation looking to go do a revival. This was not his first revival, but something happened that he had not experienced before. If you want something else from God, you've got to be willing to let go of what you have. You have to be, listen, we have to increase our expectation. We have to open up our prayers and we have to start saying things to the Lord, whatever you're doing in this season. Don't do it without me. I don't want to be limited. I don't want to be guilty of putting God in a box. My God, I don't want to be guilty of limiting God. I don't want to be guilty of calling it one thing and God has more. If he wants to give me thousands, let me stop asking for hundreds. Glory to God. If he wants to do millions, I've got to make room. Endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. Hallelujah. They were out on the parking lot. It was documented that during the course of this revival, 350,000 people attended. And 3,000 of them gave their lives to Christ, made a decision for Christ. This is the kind of stuff that we hear about in the Bible, on, in the Acts of the Apostles. But this was the first crusade. What happens? He made himself available, and God blessed him. It didn't start out with a bang. It didn't start out. But listen, even the children of Israel, if you look at them, how God carried them over the Red Sea, it was not until they got to the sea that he divided the water. It was not until they got to the sea that he divided the water. He wanted them to see the sea that was before them. I want you to see what I'm about to do for you. You're talking about miracles, signs, and wonders. I want your eyes wide open. Your soul won't have to look back and wonder how you made it over. God wants you with your eyes wide open. I want you to see your deliverance. I want you to see what was impossible become a possibility. Here they are before a Red Sea. Too much to drink and too much to swim through. But God divided the sea before them. Listen, he used somebody that had enough faith to believe, enough sense to believe that God can do anything. Moses, what is it that you have in your hand? Oh, just my rod. Moses, stretch out your rod. I want to say to you today, believer, what is it that you have in your hand? What has God already given you to work with? Before I ask him for anything else, God, I thank you for what you've already done. <laughs> the waters stood up like great walls. They walked across on dry ground because somebody was willing to go, to launch out, to step out in faith. Billy Graham says that the turning point of the revival was when the number one radio host and announcer in the city came to the meeting, gave his life to Christ, and went on the air telling everybody that the Lord had saved him. They knew who he was. They knew what kind of life he was living. But he went on the radio and told them, I went to a meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. And something <laughs> got a hold of me. His name is Stuart Hamblin. You don't have to remember his name, but I want you to remember the situation. 1956, he wrote a song that we're still singing today. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With his arms wide open. He'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. Endless possibilities. What is the turning point in your life and your walk with God? Perhaps you haven't got there yet. Hallelujah. But the turning point is that place when you are believing God just a little bit and just enough, but something happened in your spirit. <laughs> when your spirit got a hold of this thing, listen, if I can believe God for that, surely I can believe him for this. Hallelujah. If I can see God bring me through, bring me over, bring me up, my God, what can God not do? Oh, the answer is nothing. 
no thing is impossible to him that believes. Let me take you back to St. Mark uh, in the gospel here. You'll find a man who is concerned about the well-being of his son. His son has what we might call today split personality. He had not only a mental disorder, but he had a spiritual fight that was going on. Spiritual problem, double jeopardy. Mm. Situations seem bad. And many times it's easier to deal with one or the other, but when you have to deal with both, my God, only God can do it. Not only did he need a doctor who could diagnose the condition, but my God, the Bible tells us about this great physician. He's concerned about mind, body, and soul. <laughs> oh, it's no secret what God can do if you can believe. This man comes to where he heard that Jesus was going to be. That means he had enough faith to believe that if I could only get there, if I can get to the place where I know God is moving and where he's waiting, if I can get, my God, for many of us today, we'll say if I can get to the house of God, if I can get to the house, a place where he's working miracles. And so this man made an effort to get to Jesus. But when he gets there, he didn't find Jesus, but he found his disciples, these ambassadors, these Christ representatives. He found them there, and he thought to himself. In fact, he says it out loud. It, 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 since Jesus isn't here, surely one of these who represent him can do something for us. He was in a situation where he needed help for us. I'm not just looking for myself because when my son gets free, somebody else is going to get free. When my son gets delivered, somebody else is going to get delivered. Glory to God. I need to get to Jesus. I want to tell you what happens when he gets there. I'm going to walk you through four points. Amen. These will be your points to ponder. Think about this. We'll find that the man incur, incurred or uh, came into fellowship. He experienced leadership. He took ownership and discovered God's workmanship. Tell somebody, get in the flow. Get in the flow. I want you to know also that this flow means that miracles don't have to be a one-time experience for you. Hallelujah. You can cause the miracles of God to flow in your life. Flow means an uninterrupted stream. <laughs> an uninterrupted stream. Reoccurring events. When it's flowing, that means that all the dots are connecting, things are coming together. I asked God for this, but he added something else on top of it. I found out what fringe benefits are all about. Somebody say, get in the flow. Oh, endless possibilities. You don't have to stop here. Glory to God. Miracles, signs, and wonders. <laughs> endless possibilities. And so what happens here, let me tell you about this fellowship. What happens in fellowship? The Bible, uh, you'll find if you're looking at it in the Greek, it's koinia. It means communion or ideal Christian fellowship. What happens is when the saints get together. When believers get together with other believers, glory to God, things have to happen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Leaving in this place this morning, just hearing the word of God calls a stir in the saints of God because I know what God can do because I've already seen him work. I want you to know another thing about fellowship, and fellowship is important. Understand that fellowship is not us just getting together, but coming together and feeling each other, discerning. Uh, we ought to be so close in fellowship that you don't have to tell me when something's going on with you. I ought to be able to pick it up. That's koinonia. That's ideal 
fellowship. I, I ought to be able to tell by your temperament and your attitude and how you respond to the question to know whether or not I need to pray for you, whether or not you need to hear a song of joy, whether or not you need to be encouraged yes, yes. in the Lord. That miracle took place where the gathering was. This miracle took place where the gathering was. God chose to do this work in public. What does that teach us here? Even if your need for a miracle is private and personal, God can demonstrate and do that miracle for you in a public way where you won't be embarrassed. Ah, your receipt of the miracle doesn't have to be private. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm preaching to myself. Hallelujah. Have you ever gone through something that you didn't want nobody to know about? Hallelujah. But you sure didn't mind telling them when you got free. <laughs> oh, am I talking to anybody? Glory. When you can go back and tell them, listen, hallelujah, God can do anything. I, how do I know? Because he did it for me. Oh, I ain't got to tell you all my business. Just know that he's a way maker. Just know that he's a healer. Just know that, oh my God, oh, that God will do just what he said. The second thing that we find here is leadership. Leadership. This leadership, oh, this man is crying out of desperation to help us, help us. And I like the fact that not only does this man have faith, he's not selfish. He has faith. And he's not selfish. Sometimes we have to have faith for somebody else. When Jesus shows up, things turn around. The issue turned here. The turning point in this man's life is when Jesus showed up. We'll find in this situation lackluster leadership is magnified. Hmm. Lackluster leadership is magnified in the presence of effective and anointed leadership. When Jesus shows up, see, that's the light shining in darkness. Uh -huh. Darkness has to flee. Jesus' ability to help the man trump the father's fear or his inability to believe. Why can I say his inability to believe after I told you that he had faith? What happens is, uh, what happens to a whole lot of people that run into church folks before they meet the saints. Well, well, yes. This man showed up where Jesus was supposed to be, didn't find him there, found his representatives there, and uh, they couldn't do anything with, the, with, with this son or with this situation. But Jesus showed up. Here comes leadership, leading by example. Jesus shows up and Jesus asked the man the question, do you believe? The man says, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. You've heard me say this before. I, I think that uh, some of his unbelief came into running into some people who were ineffective in well, ministry. Well. We have to be careful that we're not in the way and distracting or disturbing, distorting the view of Christ. Disciple, you've got to be in the right place. Yeah. At the right time. Guilty of doing the right thing. They couldn't do anything with them. And Jesus says, you know, do you believe? Yes, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Jesus always goes to the root of the problem. The man had the audacity to ask Jesus, if you can do anything for us, I'm willing to accept the help. Even if it's just a little bit. Jesus let him know, all right, you need an attitude adjustment. In other words, what Jesus says to him, if I can. He turned it right back around. My God, he said, if you can believe. We said it earlier, give God something to work with. <laughs> if you can believe, if you can supply the faith that's necessary for this miracle. If you can supply the faith, I'll do the work. I'll do the performance. I need you to give me something to work with. Can you believe? Jesus said to him, if, the King James says, thou canst believe. <laughs> if you can believe, all things are possible to 
him that believes. The right kind of leadership, glory to God, will convince you or show you that your limitations are the perfect incubator for God to do the miraculous. Our limitations, our extremities is God's opportunity. When you get to the end of your rope, when you get to the end of trying to fix it yourself, when you get to the place where I, I cannot do this, this is too much, I'm casting my cares on you because your word says that you care for me. When you get there, listen, desperate times call for desperate measures. Hallelujah, that's God's opportunity to work for us. And here, my third point is ownership. Ownership. This man had to take ownership of where he was. If you want God to help you, I believe it's the Alcoholics Anonymous that has the 12-step program. The first thing is admit you got a problem. <laughs> what do you want God to heal if you constantly talk about, I ain't claiming it, I ain't claiming nothing. You got to give him some, God, my head hurts, I got a headache. Can you do something about this headache? Don't come up to Jesus and you know, I did come for something, but I can't tell you what it is. Because I don't want to say it out loud. Lucy, if you want to be free, you be, you've got to take ownership. God, this is what I want you to do. I found out some time ago that this is a God of specificity. You can be specific with God. You can tell him what you want. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to all of this is his. Why not ask for what you want? Ooh, say, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to Samuel. That's what it is. I'm talking to me. Yeah. Why not ask for what you want? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, don't be disappointed if you didn't even ask God. Glory to God. You got to give him something to work with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I believe, but. Lord, I believe, but. Get your butt out the way. I'm going to take a sip on that. But is a supposition of doubt. That goes on the same category with if. Jesus said, I need you to change your thinking, sir. I want to show you what endless possibilities look like. Oh, glory to God. You've run into the right one today. Glory to God. Change your language and you change your trajectory. Somebody says, speak life. Death and life and the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit. There are Proverbs 18, 21. Speak life. Receive life. <laughs> Workmanship. And I'm almost finished. Understand that this miracle is just for you. Come on, believer. This miracle is handcrafted. Tailor-made designed just for you with you in mind special order yes, this is how God shows up for us I told you he's a God of specificity yes, Hallelujah! when you go to him I am your child here I am and God I need you to do a work in me I'm submitting myself to your will I'm, I'm submitting myself to your divine authority I'm submitting I surrender all all to him I, oh I'm giving myself over to you mm. You'll find in Ephesians, the second chapter, in the 10th verse, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I am possibilities. I am potential. <laughs> I am who God says. And we have to remember that we belong to the king. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, my goal this morning is to put something in your mind, something in your spirit that you can go back yes, to, yes, that, that, to be reminded of who you are. Be reminded of whose you are. To be reminded I've got to get in the flow. If I want endless possibilities, I want God to keep on doing what he does. For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do. Mm. 
of his good pleasure. Well, that brings me to my close. Time to say goodbye. I, I, I pray that you heard something today that is going to help you. Ain't it a wonder about God? <laughs> I used to hear the saints saying that often growing up, and I thought, what does that mean? I had to live a little while to find out, ain't it a wonder about God? In his word, he shows us a man who feels like he's at the end of his rope, that feels like I have run out of choices. I've run out of options. I've run out of chances. What does he do for him? I don't care how far you have gotten along, you are not out of the reach of God. David said, if I made my bed in hell, you'd find me there. If I took on wings and tried to fly away somewhere, you'd find me. I can't escape you. Hallelujah. Hey, what kind of God is this? He finds out, finds out that, oh, when we feel severely limited and restricted, God can do anything. I want you to know, just like Billy Graham and uh, the other young man that wrote the song and some others that we know and perhaps even yourself, many of us did not come down the road of least, hallelujah, the least uh, resistance. Some of us come down a bumpy road. Jesus allowed this man, hallelujah, and in my mind, he was up in the mountain praying. He probably could see what was going on down below. He probably saw his disciples there working with the man, uh, saw the man show up and saw the others who were there and uh, not getting what he really needed. When Jesus shows up, I'm pretty sure, and this is just my mind, my, my imagination, he was abreast of the situation. I got you right where I want you. Sometimes we won't turn to him when things are going well for us. Many of us won't call his name as long as everything is well with us. Listen, sometimes he allows us to go through a little something. In order to get us in a place, hallelujah, where our confidence can be in him. Some of us had to find out that we can't trust this filthy flesh. You had to find out you can't trust your own mind. You had to find out you can't trust yourself. You don't know what you're going to do. Oh, hallelujah. I've said to myself oh, over the years, my God, I've said to myself, Hallelujah. I would never do that. You wouldn't catch me doing that. Hallelujah. Brother Organ is trying to chime in on me over here. Hallelujah. I, I won't ever do that. You won't catch me doing such and such a thing. But uh, keep on living. Life has a way of slapping you upside your head. And stuff that you said you were never going to do. You find out that, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, maybe... Uh, you know, I heard the old folks say, if the creek don't rise, and uh, if, a, if a certain set of circumstances don't present themselves, then I plan to do this, that, or the other. You'll find yourself changing your language. I, 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 I found out that I don't need to be telling people, oh, my child would never do that. People come and say, your son did such and such a thing. Your daughter did this and that. Hallelujah, they help you shut your mouth. Lord, I found out the hard way. <laughs> oh, I stopped saying, not my name, name. <laughs> uh, not, not Junior, Lord, no, no. You're just you, life, glory to God. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, my mama told me, all you got to do is think about what you would have done and what you were doing when you, oh, glory to God. Uh, there's some things that'll make you change your language. It'll make you be a little soft and a little less critical, glory to God. He doesn't lead us all the time down a smooth path because I need to get you to a certain place. Matter of fact, he asked Job a question. Where were you? Job, where were you when I framed the world? Where were you when I set the boundaries of the sea? 
Where were you when I told the sun one time what to do? Where were you when I set the moon in its place? I set the stars in space. Where were you? <laughs> mm. Oh my God. I want to get you in the flow here. <laughs> Uh, I, I heard a story, some of you familiar with it, where an old country preacher, hallelujah, somebody asked him the question, how can a brown cow eat green grass and give us white milk? Uh, they tell me, he said, I don't know about that. But what I found out for myself is what God can do in his chemical laboratory of redemption. He took my black soul Dipped it in red blood. And I came out whiter than snow. He told the prophet, listen, come and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet. He said, come on, listen, I'll take that red and though it be like crimson. He said, I'll wash you whiter than snow. He asked the question, who? has been my counselor who told me how to do what I do who told me how to frame the world hallelujah what kind of God is this I came to tell you today he's a God of endless possibilities there's nothing that God cannot do uh, hallelujah there's nothing that God cannot do oh, oh come here poor man with, with your son Tell me what happened to him. He said, listen, we've been going through this here and there. Been to all kinds of doctors and all kinds of helpers and all kinds of people made all kinds of promises. I got to calm down a little bit. <laughs> uh, we, we tried this and we tried that. He said, sometimes he throws himself in the fire. Sometimes he eats things that he shouldn't be eating. And sometimes he's handling stuff that he shouldn't. And sometimes he's talking a little off. And, and, and the man said, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, he said, listen, if you can believe. Well, that's what he said. That's nothing that I can't handle. <laughs> Tell me what you're going through. Tell me all of your trouble. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> Tell him all about your problem. He said, I'll work it out for you. But I need you to believe. Oh, I got to stop. <laughs> I heard on the prayer line this morning for the second time about the blood. Never lose his power. We drove to church. I sang it this morning all in the house. Yeah. On the way to church, yeah. five times we heard the blood, blood. but never lose its power. Yeah. I told First Lady, I said, how appropriate on First Sunday. But talking about endless possibilities, I remember Andre Crouch telling us a story about how that came about. He was writing, and it was the first song that he ever wrote. <laughs> He's writing the words down. He got a little bit discouraged. He took the paper, balled it up, and threw it in the trash. He was frustrated. His sister saw him throw it in the garbage, and Sandra Crouch, that's his twin sister, she went and she picked it up, and, and she told him, she said, oh, this is beautiful. She said, you can do something with this. And, sit down at the piano well, well. and she started talking to him. Yeah, all right, all right. Somebody know the words? Yeah. <laughs> you say, yeah, what's the word? The blood. Yeah, how did it start out? The blood that Jesus shed well, for me, for me. Way, back. way back on yeah. Calvary. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Brother Wells is going to help me preach this morning. The blood that gives me strength. Get you a microphone. Come on, come on. From day, From day to day. Today. It will never lose its power. 
Take me back to the beginning. How did that start out? Because somebody might not have heard it. The blood. The blood. That Jesus shed for me. Where was it? Way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from death. I got the clothes right there. The last thing that I want to say, if I can just say it one more time, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary, this blood gives me strength from day, from day, from day to day. It will never because it's endless possibility. It's endless. This is the kind of flow that we need. Oh, we're coming to the table. But it was the blood that flows from Calvary's mountain. It's giving me strength from day to day. Talk about miracles, signs. And wonders, miracles, signs, and wonders, miracles, signs, and wonders. Who told God that we need a little blood to redeem man? Who told God that if Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood, who told him that in 2020? When COVID-19 is running rampant in the land, somebody is covered under the blood. Somebody is covered under the blood. Somebody came through on the other side and they'll tell you what killed them gave me life, miracle, time. And wonder, miracle, time. The blood will never lose its power. The blood will never lose its power. Endless possibility. Can you? Glory to God. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. There's nothing impossible to him that believes. Our faith is in God. Our trust is in God. Hallelujah. Endless possibilities. There's a flow to this thing.
your name, God. We want to thank you for joining us this morning at the historic Sherman Memorial Church of God in Christ. We believe in the wonder-working power of the blood. It will never lose. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It will never lose. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa! 